Here is Dan. It's exciting times. Uh, List Cloggers podcast. It's been a while in the making. We've done a pilot. We've done another pilot. We've done a couple of other pilots, but I think it's just, let's just hit it now. Let's just go for it because it's exciting to be here and it's exciting to have you and have myself. I just miss you. I miss you too, mate. Um, as you said there, it's very exciting to have both of us here for the podcast. That's normally how these things work. If yep. you or I wasn't here, probably wouldn't work. So it's great to be here. I've been flat out, obviously. Um, flat yep. out doing heaps of things, man. The economy one, my shoulders at the moment, building building homes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't know what that's like. Um, you know what's really... No, I wouldn't. You know what's really exciting about a new podcast that we have together? What? Spend time together. A new intro song. Buckley kicked one from 50 last week and he's missed the start. So he's celebrating. He's, he's celebrating a point. Jackie Chan returns. Garrett just kicked it. Danny Vaughn, Danny Vaughn, Danny Vaughn, my friend, how are you? Welcome to List Cloggers. Uh, it's our new podcast. I'm excited. <laughs> You've got a hair in your mouth. It's okay. We'll keep moving because it's been an exciting time for us. This has been a while in the making, my friend, and it's ex- it's it's finally here. It's a people's show. It's our show, but it's for the people, and we're excited. Very long time coming. We're finally here. So, mate, I'm excited. Like you said, it's for the people. And we love the people out there. We love everyone who's jumped on the Instagram page, who's who chucking a plus a follow. Chuck, chucking us a follow. No English came out then. Chucking us a follow. Um, we love you. We, we know there's a great demand for us to release this. And we thought, you know what? You bang on the door, we open it. So here you are. It's, it's actually true. We're very, no, to be honest and be all seriousness, we are absolutely humbled and touched with, with everyone that's reached out, everyone that's got around the show thus far. We apologize it's taken so long, but uh, we're here now and... COVID's throwing a little bit of a spanner in the works, but it can't stop us because it can't stop anyone with motivation uh, yep. in the minds, and we know that everyone's got that. So I think it would be remiss of us uh, not to explain the show because it's it's not just funny, funny laughs, gags. Um, as much as it will be some fun times, this show's for the people, and we want to help everyone out there. As we said, we're absolutely humbled, and we love how much everyone's been getting around the show. Honestly, it's been overwhelming. Yeah, look, it has. I probably didn't think that we'd get this much traction without even releasing one episode, which has been huge. So, um, you know what they say, it's only down from here. It can only get worse. So, <laughs> I honestly think it can. <laughs> I, it's, I, only th- I honestly think this can yeah. only get worse from here. Everyone's ex- expectations are so yeah, high. Yeah, I feel like expectations I don't know if it's ever going to live up to anything. are very high, but true to list cloggers form, we're going to really disappoint a lot of people. So that's fine, and that's happy. That's what we do here. We we have big expectations, and we let each other down because we're all list cloggers. That's why. And I did. it's funny you say list cloggers, Dan, because I think it's it's a good time to actually identify what a list clogger is. A list clogger is someone with a big heart. A list clogger is someone with a big ticker. Someone that loves their friends. Mm. Someone that loves their family. Someone that leaves nothing out there. Maybe they don't have the follow through with it, but it doesn't matter because no. they've got the passion. A list clogger is someone that loves having a good time. And I think that if that's you, this show is for you and uh, we're all about it. So thank you so much for tuning in, as we said, and we want to hear your stories. As we said, we've got a bit of fan engagement at the end, which we've been very excited about. And and as I said, we've read all your messages, which we will touch on, but uh, this show is for you, all the list cloggers out there. And obviously Dan as well, we didn't want to, we we wanted to start, if the the world was perfect, which... uh, it isn't at the moment, but it sort of is as well because you just got to embrace it. We would love to have gotten people in studio. We want to get people in oh, the yeah. show. So once once Melbourne's okay, people are coming into the studio and doing the show with us. But at the moment, we're, we're just making do with what we can. Well, um, yeah, we have to, it, mate. Times, times are changing. It, times are tough. How, how much do you want to meet our people? Our people? I'm, I don't know about you, but I meet them every day on the streets when I'm building houses, you know? <laughs> There's list cloggers coming up to me left, right and centre saying, oh, I'm struggling with so much of my life. And I say, join the club. <laughs> I'm struggling a lot too, <laughs> man. So we're not above anyone. We're all in this together. It's a big list clogging <laughs> ship that's sinking. So if you feel like sinking, <laughs> grab a scuba pack and jump on. Makes no okay, sense. I'm- I'm a little bit more optimistic. I, I oh. would have said that we're all going on a journey together to greatness, but I, I, I think we've got to balance each other. You know what else is going on a journey to greatness? That, you know what else? What did your <laughs> other ship was going on a journey to greatness? Titanic, and it hit okay. a big iceberg. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but they found love on the way. Yeah, she, yeah, Rose could have been more selfless, but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, we'll change the, the story uh, with that one. Dan, it's a trying time. 
let alone COVID uh, nineteen, which has been a it's just been silly. Pretty pissed off with that whole it's been thing. A silly to be honest, but I don't want to touch on it. Besides the fact of, of that, it's a time in our lives that's caused a lot of heartache. And I know not just us, a lot of other people, because it's finals footy and everyone thinks, oh, finals footy, you can smell the fresh air, you can smell the, the grass. For the list cloggers and for the people out there who try their hardest, it's also a time of heartbreak because mm-hmm. it's when you realise sometimes you're just not good enough. Yeah, you really realise you're, you're not up to the standard and you haven't been for probably 12 months minimum. And that's okay because... You come to us and we help you out and how to get through it. But it's a hard, it's a hard time of the year, you know. Obviously, um, eight teams are playing finals and the players at those clubs, they get to extend their journey a little bit longer, probably still knowing in the back of their mind that in minimum <laughs> one week, maximum four, something's going to come to an end soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be someone's they, career. Uh, can I just say, I've been in that position, playing in a good team in finals, and you know when you get, you haven't played all year. Like, let's nah. be honest, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get called up into finals, okay? Like, it's never. Well, surely, besides Marlon Pickett, that's surely there's you know, no. He was actually a good player. Surely there's so. no fringe player right now that's thinking oh, I'm a massive chance to get a call up here. <laughs> <laughs> and if you if you are, if you you're, if you're you, that person, turn off the podcast right now. Yeah, honestly, if we that's, can't if help that's you what you think, that you got to come to grips with the reality. If you haven't played all year, and you're not really burning the embrace house out of trading, embrace that you're just clogging up a spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming and it's coming hard, and you got to embrace it because, like I said, one of the things I forgot to mention of what a list clogger is, it's it's self aware. Mm. If you're not self aware, oh, yeah. that's the critical you've thing. Be. Very self aware. Um, I think today it would be it'd be remiss of us not to sort of set the scene for everyone. I know people listening have probably heard our journeys a million times before, but I think for the last time, just to set the scene, I think it'd be remiss of us not to touch on the fact that list management time is, is a hard time. Retirements, uh, delistings, um, those mm-hmm. big calls can can be tough. Yeah, oh yes, um, they can. Being, being delisted is humiliating because I, I would know that it's, it's happened twice and not even... Not even delisting anyone out there who's been fired. You know, it's not it's not a comfortable feeling. I could imagine. It's obviously quite <laughs> quite hard. But one thing that's even more embarrassing than getting delisted mm-hmm. is retiring when you're going to get delisted. Slap in the face at worst, they've retired this year. Congrats, you feel big now. I um, really think that I pioneered that power move to be. It's not a it's not a power move. I think at it all. is. It's actually I, embarrassing. No, it's not embarrassing. It's pioneering to end things on your terms. So let's it's just not, refresh the memories. Ter- mm, it is on your terms <laughs> because they can't sack you if you retire. Anyway, let's refresh the memories for every list clogger out there. But I'm sure they know this. Um, Twenty. It's the year 2017. I haven't played all year. Um, <laughs> body obviously let me down. And no, you- it didn't. Your body was fine. Mm, okay. You just sucked. Anyway. <laughs> This is your story now, is it? Body let me down. Like, Bolts kept saying, mate, we want you the team, but your body just won't no, do it. No, he never said that. He never and said I was that. like, I know, Bolts, it's crazy, and my body just won't let me get the ball. Anyway, I knew about <laughs> round three that my career was done just because I wasn't great, obviously, at footy. And then more so, my body let me down. So what I decided to do was come that last round of the season, instead of, you know having that exit meeting where they delist you and they they hash over how bad your career was I decided to flip the table and say I'm going to retire so you can't sack me and really pioneered an amazing move for all AFL players out there if you are on the brink of getting delisted if you retire then it looks a lot better in the papers and in the media than just saying you got delisted so I saw a few more players today did it did you see that? Yeah, but doesn't that just make you look stupid when you retire? Uh, because as I said, you you have pioneered this move, mm. which I, I don't I don't see it as a power move. Um, I, do. I see it as quite the opposite. <laughs> Basically, you have done this, and then three months later, you've gone and signed at a local club. So technically, by retiring, you're you're not actually retiring. Do you Talk know me that- through that time though, because I, I I don't know this. Yes, but I've heard from someone very close to this situation mm. when you went in and reti- retired yes they asked you if you wanted to make a speech <laughs> yeah look I can confirm <laughs> when I retired 
at Carlton, I was asked by... A player that hasn't played in two years. Wants some- <laughs> I, was, I was asked by the people no, at the club. Plugs, you never know who you I was, are. I was asked by the people, and mind you, people high up at the footy club came to me and asked if I'd like to do a retirement speech. <laughs> and I said, look, it's not about me. The footy club's bigger than me. And I don't want to do that. So I could have I could have taken the spotlight away from obviously some great players who were actually retiring, but I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to go out on my terms, body let me down, mm. go see the doctor, get a jab, and go sign a local club three months later. If we reverse time back, I mm. think there's some telltale signs. And I mentioned before self-awareness because I think it was nearly my undoing. I was too self-aware. Like when no, I you knew weren't. it was the end. You generally thought you were a chance to get a game is what you were. <laughs> No I, no, I knew I was nowhere near it. That is such a lie. You would text me saying, yeah, kick three, had 14 in the twos. I'm a chance. <laughs> and then apparently the calf let go on you a couple of times. Okay, let's move on from that. <laughs> let's move on from that point. I think what I'm trying to say is when do you realise mm. that things aren't going your way? And not just, not just in footy, but in, I suppose in the workplace as well, because this can be referred to anyone out there that's – just not on terms with the boss. For me, I think a big thing with your boss is eye contact. And and mm. when your boss stops making eye contact with you, you know something's not right. Like walking down the corridor, you normally can give like a a bit of a like cheeky wink or you know just do the the nod. When that starts disappearing, especially in the second half of the year, you know mm, it's, this guy's That's not he's not good. acknowledging me anymore. The the biggest one for mine is when you are split into two groups in the workplace and one group is significantly <laughs> better than the other and then your boss makes you compete against each other <laughs> for practice <laughs> leading into that week's match. And when you're in the, the worst team for 18 weeks straight, that's probably the sign where you're not... You know what the worst, you know what the worst part is? Is when they start making you a leader of that group because, oh. like, you just, you just you just know what's going on. they like, Dill, can you just take... Can you just take the, you know, the, t- the B team and just talk to them about what... <laughs> I played more games at training as Cyril Rioli than I did as myself. Yeah. Like, I, like, I, like they, the old thing was like, mate, go play Cyril Rioli so that, like, we can just, like, tag you and, like, try and, like, get you out of the game. I said, for one thing, mate... Me being Cyril Rioli, it's not going to be the same thing as what Cyril Rioli is doing, for one. So you should probably just get someone actually to do that. Uh, unrealistic game day. You know, Sam Doherty's rolling up on Cyril Rioli at, on Thursday at 3.30 versus Saturday night. Mm. Um, they're going to be, it's not going to be setting him up for a very good experience whatsoever of what he's actually going to partake in the no. game. And especially like someone like you, like it'd be the total opposite of what Cyril would be. So just really... Oh. A non-event okay. for Sam Doherty to be rolling up on you. Anyway, I was once Adam Goods at training. That was fun. <laughs> I was a big inside bid. And then, I, and then I had to tag him in the, the kneeful. And I towed him up. He, no, he didn't. Yeah, I did. He had 35. <laughs> Could have had 50. Um, okay. When it comes to the end, and, and again, we're just giving some more insight to people on, on what happens in these times. Obviously, you have the meetings. You said, uh, realistically, it's happened t- once for you, twice for me how does the conversation go ahead let's give a bit of an insight onto what the exit review looks like what mm. the day looks like because there's a the, you, you basically get a schedule don't you yeah you do you, you schedule i think you, from memory you play that last game and then another sign is going back briefly of when things aren't great is when your <laughs> meeting is early on like early and on from that last game. It's with three other blokes that yeah. probably aren't yeah. going Yeah, and on. you see that the people before you or after you are also going to get delisted. Um, so that's <laughs> never great. So that that happens. So what happened? You get your timesheet. Um, depending on what rotation you have, you either see the doctor. If you know you're getting delisted, there's no point in telling him that you're sore for preseason next next year. <laughs> <laughs> Just say you're sweet. Then the my, did you have like my favourite? No, no, my favourite meeting is with the weights coach <laughs> because they like a lot of the time they have no idea what's going on. Even like who's playing, they don't really follow footy. They just love weights. And they'll be like, yeah, mate, really need you to come back. Like 85 kilos. You've really got to come back strong this year. Really work on your leg strength. Like, mate, I'm not coming back. No. Just save it. Like, it's not <laughs> happening. So that's – I reckon my favourite thing about delisting you is um, every footy club has a WhatsApp group. 
Yeah. And having to either get kicked out or say goodbye to that group is... It's a, dude, you, I, I'm not being silly here, but I heard that you were sour when GWS wanted to kick you out of the group and you might still be in it because you, you kicked up that much of a stink about having to leave the group. Oh, you've actually hit you've actually hit on the heartstrings here because there is there is groups like obviously WhatsApp groups that have you know messages uh, in them for their um, work regarding to you know games and and you know messages team team messages you know defend 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 basically at the end of the year you know when you when you get the the tap on the shoulder the hardest part is leaving the WhatsApp group yeah um and that that is hard because you send in the message you know really really heartfelt message and then you just say you know boys it's been real it's been good just hasn't been real good from my end unfortunately and uh (laughs) see you later and then you just exit before anyone can say anything and from my point of view i'd like to think that you know i put a lot of effort into that that message Mm. and i'd like to think that would hit on the heartstrings of everyone it would the odds are 95 percent of those blokes did not even read the message at all and have not still probably don't even notice that i'm not there you you hit them at the wrong time of the year they just want to go away on holiday and to the pub and you sending a message like that is ruining their experience. I think the funniest thing about this time of the year is the Mad Mondays for those guys that are delisted because they come in wanting to have a good day, but you can tell that it's weighing heavily on them. And then they get, you know, a few pots into them, a few pints, and then they keep saying like... What's going on with your contract, man? <laughs> What's going on with your contract? Yeah, so like, have you heard anything yet or... So what are you doing? Like, you know, like... Who are you yeah, talking like to? Manager said that manager said that, like, they weren't doing, like, any contracts in the last six months of the year. So, like, yeah, like, no one signed anything yet, I suppose. Yeah. Nick Minute, like, announced on Twitter, 13 blokes have signed so new deals and you're... That's the funniest thing. Yeah, no, thing. I, it doesn't matter, man, because, like, North are pretty keen on me anyway. Yeah. No, no, and, North um, are going to offer me like, 350. 350,000. <laughs> I haven't blown played in two years, but they're pretty keen to throw 400,000 at me. Nah, nah, they just saw my run in the twos, like at Preston City Oval. They saw me They saw me dashing off half-back, so pretty sure pretty sure Brad wants me to play. Brad Scott, don't even know who coaches there. Could be Chris or Brad, twins. <laughs> anyway, the, both the Scott brothers want me in North Melbourne. <laughs> the reason I'm laughing at this so hard is that actually happens so many times, especially when we're at Carlton, and it's like, mate... What would North Melbourne being the 18th team on the ladder want? <laughs> what like do a twos you? player from the 17th team on the ladder. <laughs> nah, they just want to. They just, you know, they're just trying new things at North. They just want me there. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, it's just like they think that like they can bring the best out in me. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna play. I'll be, I play half back, but they they think it more of a half forward role, tagging inside mid, outside bench. <laughs> Oh, shit. This is actually just bringing up some heartstrings. So, look, that's what goes on this time of year. And that's the honest truth. It's it's a tough time. We touched on it. Finals guys holding in there. Um, the message would be, you know, if you're listening to this and, and you play for one of the top eight teams, which I'm sure you are um, listening to this, be self-aware. Cherish but every moment then again, also. enjoy your time. Cherish every moment because, mm. you know, reality is you'll probably be on this podcast with us next year. Every um, chance. And that's fine. That's every chance. That's fine. That's the that's, coming of the podcast is also, that. you know, that's that's not too bad. Coming off an AFL list and coming on this cloggers podcast, I mean, things could be worse. I don't know if they could. Don't know either. But just <laughs> what, <laughs> trying to get some guests on. We have had a total of zero guests and zero sponsors. Yes. And that's a time where we thank our sponsors, sponsors. for coming on the show. We love list your brand, list cloggers. <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome to our show and thank you for sponsoring us. Your brand. And gee whiz, Liz Cloggers proudly brought to you by your brand. We love when you use your, your brand. Anything. I don't know. It could be anything. We, we don't discriminate in any brands. We love all brands no. uh, on this show. So we're more than happy to. All brand to as well, out. if they're listening. Yeah. <laughs> sponsors Dan we mentioned it earlier and we've probably got in a little bit of a trance there with with the old memories and uh you know tough times it's good to talk about it but um <laughs> sorry sorry I just had to well, look at door what just happened then <laughs> no it was a hiccup don't we, do it ever again we are here to help as we said mm. and we said that from from day dot I know we've touched on it again but we honestly cannot thank everyone enough for sending in messages it's been outstanding honestly um we've read them all we love them we're going to try get back to literally everyone but there has been a couple that have stood out Mm -hmm. um and there's a couple that we really want to get on the show today yes one of those being our good friend luke yates yatesy boy yatesy man he's a a good man and he's loved our show we absolutely love him he's a great character we love him and 
he's a good man. Um, he's a handsome man too, uh, which is good. He's and never he's never Yates either. It's, Yates, anyway. Yelling. Wow. Uh, <laughs> could have ruined it. He might not like us anymore. <laughs> and basically, Yates, he has, he's been doing really well. And we love that he's been happy and we love that, Look, look! I'm just looking at his, his Instagram now, and it just actually just touches my heartstrings a little bit. I absolutely love him. And Yatey sent us in a voice message. Mm. Have a listen. Hey guys, Luke Yates here from Adelaide. Just looking for some love advice for gift buying for significant others. Would you suggest going hard whilst fresh in the relationship or easing into it? Would love to hear your thoughts on what is and isn't an acceptable amount to spend. Cheers. <sighs> Now, Dan, Yatesy. let me tell you about Yatesy because we love Yatesy because I just want to quickly fill you in on a couple of things about Yatesy. He's an absolute legend. Um, he's got a photo of here in a, in a cricket whites, just all whites. You're batting or bowling, mate. I have no idea. Um, then he's got a photo of him with a baby. So oh, we know he's, he's trustful. Yatesy. We know he's... We know that, look, it's probably not his because he looks about 18. But, Never and if know. it is, that's great. But I don't Start him young these days. go into that. Well, on but he Dad. looks very trusting. And I think that he is a really good guy. Um, he's also got a photo of him just with a thumbs up, which I love. Close up. <laughs> closer the better sometimes. Um, he's also travelled Europe. Oh, so which is oh great. okay. So he's cultured, Someone's got deep he's pockets and deep pockets. Tells me he's, tells yeah. me he's got a little bit of... Someone's gosh, cruising which, around on a sail ship nice. in Croatia. Croatia. And we've just said then that Yatesy is after some relationship advice mm. on what to buy a significant other. Now, I will not divulge the significant other because I can see that Yatesy has nearly bigger than the present buying thing. It looks like it's gone official on Instagram now. The, the latest post is Yatesy with his significant other. Wow, so, huge Yatesy, huge move. It, it's getting, it looks Very like it's getting pretty serious. serious. You know what it's like. You know how hard it is sometimes. Yeah. So that that first step of posting a photo with yeah. your significant other. It's the biggest um, one. Is a, it's a big step. Yeah, it it's is. announcing to Instagram. That's bigger than, that's the modern day status um, on Facebook. That's pretty big mm. that I've heard from from the young kids. Uh, so Yatesy, look, w- what do you think, Dan? I want to help this guy out. He seems like an absolute champion, which he is. We know that. And he looks like he's in love. He also and sounds when love rich. Hits you, it hits you like a ton of bricks. And he is rich. So what would you do if you were in his shoes, which would probably be some Gucci shoes or something like that? Wait, so have we confirmed the fact that Yatesy's got money to burn or not? I think so. I think he's been to Europe. Like, he's on holidays. And he obviously loves his his girlfriend, which which we which we love because we love love. Well, and the, and and first first girlfriend like what fresh we're fresh in, obviously. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's fresh. Well, they've only had one post together, so um, I think that it's relatively fresh. It's a for for mine. It's a dinner card flowers set up. Mm. Because if you I go like to, if you go too hard too early, Yatesy, yeah, it's a big fall from from Love Town, you know. And yep. I feel like the, it's fresh still. First post, as you said, he's, he obviously wears Gucci flip flops, like we've we've mentioned, and he sells boats in Croatia, <laughs> which he probably owns. So maybe it's either that one or it's a boat that he owns in in Europe somewhere. And I'm thinking the flowers oh, are a better option. <laughs> I don't mind that. I don't mind the flowers. I like the dinner and I like the card, but I think it's a little bit un- like it's been done. I think that okay. Like in all seriousness, that's probably really bad advice. And uh, it probably shows yep. through yourself. I think that we're here to give advice that you can't get off Google. I, I want to plan something for Yatesy oh, that he's not just going to get from Google. You know, I want to. I want to plan something good. Yatesy, if you're listening this, this right is- now, start downloading Tinder because it's about to go south. Like, yeah, see, this is my uh, plan. I, from my experience, is a good app as well. From my experience, it's all about what you can put into the gift. It's not about how much you spend. It's about <laughs> the effort that goes into the gift. I find from my one girlfriend <laughs> that I've had <laughs> for 10 years that I've learned this from, by the way, I've learned this from not doing these things. So I just know that, you know, for example, for a birthday this year, I went all out and I thought, look, I'm going to really treat Jazzy Bay, little tofu princess, and I'm going to buy her some really, really good presents, right? Uh, Bought 
you know this, Dan. I told you this story. I bought her some immaculate presents. I really went out because before this, you know, I, I hadn't really done that. And I thought this year I really want to do it because it's, you know, it's due. It's about that time I do Ten this. years in, you'd hope so. Dan, I bought her some incredible parents. I bought her some incredible parents. presents. And so they'll, you know, like I'm... <laughs> no, she already had those. I bought her some really good presents. And the one thing that she was really flat about though, like she was wrapped with the presents, but the one thing she was really flat about was that I didn't write a card. It's been done before, apparently. No, but the dinner... that I'm saying the dinner's been done. The card is essential. I'm saying it's all about the card. I think the card... A handmade card with maybe some cut-out photos of you two, that hits us in the, in the tick, in the tick-tick, in the bang-bang. And that's what we want, the love. So, Yates, I'd say the card's a good place to start. And when I'm talking card, I don't just want my, like, hey, darling, or darling, no, I don't know if girls like darling. Hey, my love... Love you, yada, 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 all the way. I respect you. You know, you are my world. But then I want also a gift. And maybe it is the dinner. <laughs> Yatesy, set your radius on Tinder to 500Ks after this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yatesy, mate, just get flowers, dinner, a card, uh, that's all you need and if it doesn't work at least you've got Tinder after deals advice and you can jump no, on that no 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 Yates, he, I can see the way he looks at uh, this at this uh, at his partner I think that they're they're destined for success how tall is Yates, he, Yates he's a roughly. good man big enough he's big bigger than me oh not not a piss, big. so he's not a piss ant no, he's not a piss ant. Mm, that makes sense. He's not a piss ant. But yeah, see, good luck. Dan, there's also another video. Yes. Uh, and sorry, this one's a video. This one's oh, been wow. a TikTok sent in by our good friend Shane Larkin, who's who's an in- incredible Oh, we man. love Shane. Oh. And he's, we love Shane. Oh. And that's what the young kids are on these days. It's cool. Oh, yes. It's hip. It's swag. It's fire. And it's, um, it's quite good. Shane, uh, hit it. Hey, Dill. Hey, Dan. Listeners at List Cloggers, how you going? My footy career was, it started when I was about 13. Mum had this rule. We weren't allowed to play contact sport until we were 13. So yeah, no worries, that's fine. My 13th birthday rolls around and I'm like under 14s, pulling on the Guernsey for Barney Footy Club. Mum goes, oh, what about Nate? Do you reckon he could play with you? I was like, don't see that he's 13, mate. So no. Anyway, I was under the pressure. Nate pulled on the jumper. My first game, I sat on the bench watching him play. Under 17s, similar story. I go up, next age group, Nath plays two games, under 14s and under 17, as a 13 year old, and I'm still watching him play. Don't get it, guys. Fill me in. Love to hear back from you. See you, boys. Mate, get Damn. your brother. I've got some advice for you. Your oh. brother sounds like an absolute weapon. <laughs> He's, he is destroying your life. <laughs> Stay as far away as you can. Oh, shivers. Um, must be a good footy player, though. Must be, must be pretty good. Also, got the youngest brother good. in the world, doesn't age, plays 12s, 13s, 14s, 15s, 16s, and 17s in one day. <laughs> now, I don't know what's going on. Going on with his brother, he's playing every age group. Oh, mate, because he's that good at footy. And his mum said, Take your brother down. I think his name Nathan. Take it's- Nathan down so he can just clean up every seasonal award. He's won best and fairest <laughs> in every age group for Barney. So you know, Barney must be going all right. All right, right, all right. We've got to help. We've got to help. We've got to help. Um, I told you what we're going to do. <laughs> Shane, <laughs> yes, it's hard. It is hard because. Your brother seems like an absolute weapon, as we said. He must be a good player, but that doesn't mean that you're not a good person. Um, so look, take... take Your brother out. Deck him. Th- yeah, take the brother... <laughs> <laughs> Look at the hiccups. Shane, give take me brother, give, Shane. give me a postcode and phone number and he'll be eliminated in three days, Shane. And then you'll be Honestly, playing 17 for Barney. Just saying this, but as soon as we get in studio, the first yeah. guest I want to get in is Shane. Please. And I honestly want him to come in and just explain a little bit more about what's going on. You can see oh, the, 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 the what's pain going on. in his eyes. I'll get Shane, but you can come, mate. You can stay at my house. You know, we'll have some beers together. Don't bring your brother, though, because I don't want him nah. anywhere near Anna. He, he, <laughs> he might end up actually... Taking over the podcast <laughs> and hosting himself. Shana. I really want to just scope out his brother and just see what he's what we're dealing yeah, with. If here. his brother, Shane, if you and your brother listen to this, we should we should actually 
get them to compete against each other. Oh, I'd love an arm wrestle, younger brother versus, like, you know, Nathan versus Shane It'll with be... mum officiating. I feel like Nathan's a favourite as well, Shane. I'm sorry. I'm just getting that from the store. Oh. It, got me think- it got me thinking, though. It got, it got me thinking of sibling rivalries. Oh, yeah, and man. I know out there it's 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 strong. Like, it, there, you know, there's always times where your brother or you, your, your older brother, your older sister is is in the limelight. So we want to hear if there's been ever any times where siblings haven't seen eye to eye or there's something going on. We want to mediate it and we want you on the show to, to help out. We do. Um, well, these we need to help in any situation, clearly. I think the last two scenarios that we've had in questions, we've probably nailed both of them, if I'm being quite honest. I mean, don't, don't need to go on you know, Google to, to get advice. Come on, list cloggers, we'll give you the best advice ever. If your brother or sister is 10 times better than you or they get favoured by mum or dad, please slide into our DMs at ListGloggers on Instagram. Please. <laughs> and let us know because we want you on the show and we want to talk about it. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm agreed. Literally keep, you got the hiccups, don't you? Yeah, the hiccups yeah I do. We're going to have to cut this out. Okay, mate. Obviously, been a big, big first episode. We're close to wrapping it up, but i got one more thing that I just want to briefly bring up with you. So, obviously the Adelaide Crow situation that we spoke about at the very See, start of the podcast. Comprehende. comprehende. Just felt like normally I'd let you do this kind of thing because as we could both agree upon, you are, you know, the, the official brains of the operation. You know, you, you love actually getting in contact the with looks. people. Not the looks. You love getting in contact with people, seeing things up, and then you just let me know what's going on. You know, yes. I just, I just, I float around in the breeze and I land where I land, where you're very, oh no, no, we can't take any, any risks. We need to do things <laughs> proper. <laughs> I'm a robot as well. <laughs> anyway, so I thought that I, I've, I've done a little rough draft here of what we oh, should no. probably send to um, Adelaide Footy Club. Is this a follow up? Uh, it's more of like opening the door with a crowbar. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah. uh, look, rough draft, pretty close to the final one. Just want to see if there's anything that you want to take out of this before I send it away. So I'll read Go. it to you, Go. all right? Yes, yes. Okay, done, mate, easy. Um, <clears throat> to whom it may concern, which should be the whole football club, in brackets. After watching season 2020 and seeing the success that the football club had towards the end of the season, myself and Dylan Buckley would love to be of assistance to you in season 2021. I'm going to suggest that myself and Dylan Buckley do a pre-season session to prove to you how much of a boost we could potentially be for the club in 2021 and put, yeah. any, and put any of your concerns about our fitness to rest. As you might be aware, we haven't played in a few years, but football is like riding a bike. You never forget how to do it. We look forward to seeing you at training in pre-season. Sincerely, Goz. P.S. You're probably also aware that I'm a better player and bring more experience and X Factor. <laughs> if Dylan has to do a session with the reserves or the thirds, that will be fine. So that's a rough that's a rough draft. Anything in there that you don't you don't want in there? No, I think you've nailed it to be honest. Okay, that's um, great. That's I'm glad you said that because I've reset yes. it. So that's that <laughs> eases my mind a lot. <laughs> so that that that, that they'll see that. Um can I just say as well, to the listeners out there, we are serious about oh, this. Oh, yeah, deadly. Um, oh, not sending a message like that. Not be serious. Okay, just a quick update live on the podcast happening. We do have a reply that I sent to the Crows, and they've replied, and they've said, this is actually legit. Adelaide Football Club replied us, important question first, have you got your kicking license back from Rocket yet? <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> it's pretty good, Adelaide Crows. <laughs> See, they also, as, as well as the culture is there, they also know how to take a joke banter well. they're like a joke so just there just fresh they're in. already learning they're already learning they're learning but does this mean we're a chance to do a pre-season session with that late crows mate we are 100 percent. we have to get up there um i've been sliding into texas dms he's busy no but i know yeah, he'll get back he to us mm. um rory laird's keen spoke to him Matty nix obviously Mm. He was uh, at the Giants when I was playing thirds there and mm. knows what I'm about. Yep. Oh, I see um, what you do. I'm, I'm confident. Yeah, yeah, you see what you do. Also, a side four that I had in the car the other day. Obviously, we've been debating about who is the better footy player between you and I, Deal, and it's never going to really be settled, even though it's pretty clear cut. But there is a way yes. to do it where you and I should play against each Will. other in the twos. Will. 
We'll play against each other in the twos. You'll be a captain of one team. I'll be a captain of another. And we'll play against each other to finally settle this great debate of who is and was the better footy player. If I'm confident. I'm if very, any, very confident. Any footy clubs out there, whether it be in a state, obviously we're in Melbourne, we're happy to go to Sydney, we're happy to go to Darwin, we're happy to go to Adelaide, we're happy to go to Perth, Tassie. We're happy to travel to you. If you've got <clears> two teams in the same div, not seniors, but in the twos, Dylan and I will come to you. We'll travel. He'll be captain of one team for that game. I'll be captain of the other and help us settle this great, great argument that we have. Dan, I'm even thinking further ahead. I'm thinking yep. what we could actually do is pick a team of AFL nines, our own team oh. of AFL nines, of fans of the show, yep. and play against each other. <laughs> no, I'm thinking Nathan. No, you can have Nathan because I don't want Nathan. I want I want Shane. I want Hart. I want Tigger. Yeah. Shane has got a point to prove. That's great. Dan, Look, it's been great. It's been real. It hasn't been great. It's been real. It's been good. It just hasn't been real good. We've absolutely loved all your messages. As we said, um, we we really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Head to the List Gloggers Instagram and jump on there. Send us in all your questions and you can feature on the show. That's it. Taking that. Love you all. See you next week. Luckily kicked one from 50 last week. And he's missed the start. He's celebrating a point. Jackie Chan returns.